oyster reef restoration has really been uh, recognized as a very good way to come in and restore habitat that has been degraded over time. What we're going to be doing is building a series of 12 mounds. Those mounds will be 20 yards by 30 yards wide and a foot up above the bottom. They'll be connected to four more mounds and all in total it'll be eight acres of reef here that'll be continuous um, in terms of a restored area of reef. The idea there is that we're creating good habitat uh, for fish to use, sport fish to use, um, as well as creating new substrates for larval oysters to attach to and form new oyster reef in an area that's been degraded over time. for all 12 of the mounds that will be built here in Aransas Bay. Basically as a base that can keep the other materials up in the water column, keep it from sinking in the soft sediment. Then the next material up there is river rock. Um, the next material is, is oyster shell, and the last material is uh, crushed limestone. So three of the mounds will have an oyster shell top, three of the mounds will have river rock, three of the mounds will have limestone, and three will have crushed concrete. And essentially we're looking to see how these alternative substrates um, will perform in oyster reef restoration compared to oyster shell. The oyster shell is expensive, it's also not really readily available, and so this could offer some economic benefits in terms of um, cheaper, more readily available materials. The reason that this works is that normally when you have an oyster reef, uh, you have larval oysters, little planktonic baby oysters that float around in the water, and when they get to be about two or three weeks old, they settle out of the water and try to find a place to cement themselves onto, and that's how you get oyster reef, is you've got oysters cementing onto the older generations of oysters. But as oysters are removed, or as oyster reef gets degraded, that hard substrate isn't there anymore for those young oysters to attach to. So oyster reef restoration is really simple in the fact that you just are essentially putting the appropriate substrate back into the water, into the appropriate places, so that those larval oysters have something to attach to and, and form new generations of, of oysters and, and new reef. A lot of oyster restoration is limited by the amount of oyster shell that's available for restoration. So different materials are being used right now, and this will give us a, an, an opportunity to study them all in the same place at the same time, under the same conditions, be able to, to make some um, good recommendations for future restoration to say, you know, these are more cost effective um, substrates that can be used and hopefully they'll perform in a similar manner. The project is funded by several groups. It's funded by the Coastal Conservation Association of Texas. It's funded by the National uh, Fish and Wildlife Federation, and it's also funded by the Gulf of Mexico Foundation. So a lot of groups are coming together, uh, recognizing the need for restored habitat, and really um, putting money in to help um, preserve and conserve this important resource. And what we hope is, and what we've been able to see in our previous projects, is that as the oysters start to recruit, cement themselves onto the substrate and the reef develops is that the reef just becomes self-sustaining over time. Once you provide that material, then it provides that building block for oysters to continue to settle and for the oyster reef to build over time. So we've, we view it as a self-sustaining natural resource once we've provided the, the building blocks of the habitat. <laughs>